Hello everyone and let's check out one of the beautiful chess games from the famous match between Labordene and Alexander McDonnell, the great rivals from the 1830s. In 1834, they played a very famous match in London and this match was one of the most famous matches for more than a century but of course it is no longer famous. But let's check out this beautiful chess game from 1834 between these two great rivals Alexander McDonnell against Labordene and Labordene was the world chess champion unofficially at that time. And Alexander McDonnell was the most formidable opponent for Labordene. Even Paul Morphy admired Labordene and he studied his chess games. And Paul Morphy also annotated this famous match. He also annotated this game too. So let's check out this chess game with the notes of Paul Morphy and Labordene who is playing with the white pieces starts the game with playing d4, d5 by McDonnell, c4 the queen's gambit, a modern approach for 1834, accepted, e3, e5, bishop takes on c4, e takes on d4, e takes on d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, bishop to e7, knight to f3, and Alexander McDonnell castled, bishop to e3, and c6 by McDonnell, and Paul Morphy didn't like this move. In his notes, Paul Morphy said Alexander McDonnell should play bishop to g4, developing the bishop, rather playing c6, and then developing his queen's knight. This is more like Morphy's style, isn't it? Paul Morphy liked to develop his pieces very quickly. His chess games are textbook example of quick rapid developing. Let's get back to the real game. After bishop to e3, we have c6 by Alexander McDonnell. A slow developing move, h3, knight from b to d7, bishop to b3, knight to b6, and also Labordan a castled, knight from f to d5, a4, stopping the pawn, a5, knight to e5, bishop to e6, bishop to c2, targeting on h7, f5, advancing with the pawn, queen to e2, and f4, attacking the bishop, bishop to d2, queen to e8, and rook from a to e1 by Labordan And in here, Alexander McDonnell retreated his bishop. Well, Paul Morphy also saw the threat. Morphy said, because of the fear of the pawn loss, Alexander McDonnell retreated his bishop. What was the threat? Let's play a silly move. Let's say rook to b8. Then knight takes pawn. Knight takes on c6 is a possibility. Queen takes knight. But then, queen takes bishop with check. Queen takes queen. Rook takes queen. Well, in this position, white is better. White is a pawn up. And white is winning. Let's get back to the real game. After queen to e8, rook from a to e1, and then retreating the bishop, queen to e4 by Labordane, and he is threatening checkmate. So blocking g6. Well, Alexander McDonnell was expecting that. Actually, he was hoping that Labordane would capture the pawn and then he will attack his queen. And then that's going to be a discover attack to the queen. And Labordane was a crafty player and he captured the pawn and he knew what to do. This was not a blunder. Knight takes on f4, queen takes knight. And it happened, McDonnell played, bishop to c4, that's what he was expecting. This is a discover attack to the queen, and also attacking the rook, so Labordene played, queen to h6, and leaving the rook. Paul Morphy said in this position, Alexander McDonnell foresaw that, after capturing the f-pawn, he could discover attack to the queen, and also attacking the rook. 
but he didn't foresaw that. He could not capture Turuk without losing the game immediately. That's what Paul Morphy said. What was the little trick? By Labordone. Well, Alexander McDonnell, indeed, captured Turuk. Bishop takes on F1. And he has the exchange. What is the follow up? What would you do in this position? Well, Labordone intentionally sacrificed the exchange. But what would you do in this position? Labordone, as a crafty player, as a fox, sacrificed the exchange because he captured on G6, Bishop takes on G6 by Labordone. That's what Alexander McDonnell missed. And now, Labordone is threatening checkmate. How to defend? Well, actually, defending is not very easy. So we have pawn takes bishop, and then knight takes on g6 by Labordone. Also attacking the bishop, and the bishop is pinned. The king's safety is horribly compromised. So we have knight to c8. And in this position for the record, Paul Morphy said, bishop to f6 would prolong the game, but then losing the queen. So knight to c8, defending the bishop. And Labordone played, queen to h8, check, king to f7, queen to h7, well, the king's safety is horribly compromised. And if you noticed, not even capturing the rook, but hunting the king, king to f6, and knight to f4 by Labordone, and he is threatening to play, knight to e4, checkmate. So defending with the bishop. Let's play a random move, let's say b5, then knight to e4, check, mate. So this is why we have bishop to d3, but how to stop rook to e6? Labordane played rook to e6, check, king to g5, queen to h6, check, king to f5, and there is checkmate in one move. The Labordane played g4. Check mate. What a beautiful chess game by Labordone. And at the end of the game, Paul Morphy said, a contest admirably managed by Labordone. He admired this beautiful chess game by Labordone. And this was the last position. Labordone checkmated his opponent at move 29, his great rival. Both of these guys were great rivals. They even buried side by side in the Kensal Green Cemetery in England. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.